Okay, hi, I'm Dennis Whitmer, and I just acquired this new Vapor RS470 10 point, uh, and it's an impressive crossbow. I've had four of them over the years, and uh, this one definitely is superior to the other ones that I had. Uh, it's a lot faster, a lot quieter, uh, and it has the AccuSlide caulking mechanism, which really is a, a game changer because you can safely decaulk while you're in the tree before you come down and uh, that makes a big safety difference. Um, however, uh, there is one thing that I found at this crossbow with the AccuSlide that is problematic. Uh, I was hunting about a week and a half ago and uh, I had a constant drizzle that evening and I was in the tree for about three hours. Uh, when I got back I blew the uh, entire crossbow off so that any water that was on it would be dissipated and I lubricated the trigger as 10 point recommends. Uh, however the AccuSlide is encased within the stock and there is no maintenance required on it according to 10 points manual. Uh, about a week and a half later I went to use the bow and when I took the caulking device out of the stock and inserted it to caulk the crossbow it wouldn't turn. It was locked up. Uh, it wouldn't go forward. It wouldn't go backward. And unknowing to me uh, it had rusted inside because of water that had migrated in there. So this was on a weekend and I'm about an hour away from any 10 point dealer and on a Saturday afternoon I was pretty certain I wasn't going to have anybody that was going to be able to tear this apart and fix it for me so I decided to tear it apart myself and see what I could find. Um, so what I ended up doing was there's a series of bolts that hold this part of the stock. It's a separate piece from the bottom half of the stock. There's one, two, three, four, five screws that are all the same and then there's a screw down here that is different. These are all Allen screws. This is a 15 Torx screw here. And then you also have two Allen screws in your recoil pad or butt stock, whatever you want to call it there. Uh, so anyhow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip these off. I'm going to use an impact to take them off, but I don't recommend you use an impact to tighten because this is a composite stock and I'm certain you would strip out the material that it's made out of. So let's get this together and we'll uh, tear this apart and show you what happened with it. Okay now one thing I do suggest is that you take your camera and take a picture of the layout of everything before you tear it apart. So I'm going to get a picture of that stock arrangement in case I need to zoom in and decide what screw was a different one, in case I forget that. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to take these. They are uh, 764 Allens. I'm going to take them out a while. And that's five of them. And then this other one is a 15 Torx. We'll change that out and take this last one, which is directly underneath. And as you can see, that's a different, that's actually a screw instead of a machine screw. It's actually got screw threads on it. So that's a different one. Five that are the same and one different. When you get that accomplished, the recoil pad is the next thing. And there's a pair of 15 torques that hold it on. keep them separate from everything else and then <clears throat> I don't know if you can zoom in on this or not but there is an area here where you can see it's mated together that's where the half of the socket is removable actually ends so this this whole top assembly here we're going to try and lift off and 
I took a uh, screwdriver before because I have had this part to determine what the problem was but you can also do it with a real thin pen knife now one thing that you do have to remove is the right half of this recoil or of this uh, cheek rest and it's glued onto that stock once you get that off you can actually take your screwdriver and start working this around do it very carefully so you don't break anything and that half of the stock will pull right loose just like that now it's time to take a picture again so that we don't forget where things were situated here set that right there take a picture of this quick okay that's your AccuSlide mechanism right there and that will give you a view of where the three screws are that hold that together and the one screw that holds it in place now the belt that actually caulks and decocks goes over top of a piece here that it uses as a roller there and you want to make certain that when you if you take this off that you have that belt over top of that roller um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top screw out of the AccuSlide and that whole assembly will come out just like that and that screw is different than the other three so I'm going to lay it right there the AccuSlide itself has three screws that I need to take out and there again there are 15 Torx one of them Here's two, and here's the third one. Okay, that's the three that hold that together. Now, this top half is a cover, and it will lift off. Get the screws out of the way. Make certain they're all the way out. Just like that. That's your cover. We'll lay it right there. And this is your AccuSlide assembly here. Your uh, your belt is attached to that big pulley here. And as you can see, there's a lot of rusty area on those teeth. Now this is after I've cleaned this up once and lubricated it but what had happened was that water that migrated into this AccuSlide system actually got into this piece now remember that white washer goes with the top half so we'll take that off and we'll lay that right where that went in that square hole there this is a one-way needle bearing and what this does is it allows the shaft to turn one way the other way it gets tight so I can turn it counterclockwise easily but when I try to turn it clockwise it locks it tight and and that's the purpose of that one-way needle bearing is to allow you to crank but if you let go of the crank in your caulking operation it will not allow it to reverse and go quickly this was rusted so tight that I could not get this shaft to turn in either direction I couldn't move it in or out I couldn't get it to turn in either direction so after I soaked it for several hours in a uh, jar with corrosion X it was submerged up to the top of the C clip here I took and pop that C-clip off with a screwdriver 
which requires a little bit of finesse because it's on there pretty tight. There it goes. That's your C-clip. I popped it off of there. I took a half inch socket and a brass punch and I turned this upside down on top of the half inch socket so that the gear portion is upwards, the bearing portion is down. And I took my brass punch and I just tapped it lightly and eventually it pushed right out. Um, I have it loose now so obviously it fell out. And then at that point I removed the rust that was on this shaft and I kept spraying this needle bearing with Corrosion X which is a foam lubricant and then I would insert the shaft back into the needle bearing and rotate it, move it in now a little bit while rotating it, wipe it off, do the exact same operation again until it came out completely clean with no rust remaining and then at that point what I did was I just sprayed the bearing one more time with Corrosion X put the C-clip back onto the groove in the shaft and it's a pretty tight fit Inserted that into the bearing. Shaft spins freely one way, the opposite way it will not turn. That's the way it should operate. Okay, now prior to engaging this shaft back into a, the square recess where it's supposed to mate, which would be back in there, we're going to pop this intermediate gear out. And as you can see, there's still some rust on it. Now this is just from a couple hours in rain, and it was a light drizzle. Uh, I recently came back from a moose trip, moose hunting trip up in Quebec, and out of the seven day hunt, we had three days of solid downpour. So I can't imagine if I had been using this crossbow, what this gear assembly would look like. I'm got it fairly well clean there and then I'm gonna continue to uh, get all the rust out of it and we'll spray it down with some corrosion X. This gear surface here I've already cleaned and lubricated. Uh, I just took and sprayed my rag and wiped it with the rag so that I didn't have any excess in there. So this square assembly mates up with that spot right there in the housing and when you get it perfectly aligned it drops right in just like that. The gear turns that way fine this way it's tight and that's the way the one-way bearing should allow it to be. Intermediate gear, now that it's lubricated, can go back in, just like that. And then the top housing can be put back on after everything is lined up. So we're going to take this washer that we took off, put it back on the end of the square shaft there. Really flashlight for right now. We will take our cover plate, line it back up, and snap everything back together just like so. Okay, we still have the strap over top of this bearing surface here. And we can go ahead and tighten down our three screws that hold that together and then the four screw that holds it into the opposite side of the stock. Put that one on first. That's the one that holds it to the stock. 
That is a, a four or a 15 rather Torx is what that requires to do that with. And I suggest that you uh, tighten all these with a hand screwdriver so that you can feel the amount of torque you're putting on them. Um, as I said before, you're going into a composite stock, so you need to make certain that you're not going to strip out anything. One up here, one up here. appear to be about the same amount of torque on them. So I think we're done there. And just to double check that everything works correctly, I'm going to put the handle in before I put the other half of the stock on. Put the handle in. I'm going to crank it as though I would be cocking the bow. And that seems to work fine. The um, Crank handle can be removed and we can put the other half of our stock on. Uh, now the one thing I did want to point out was when this is fully cocked, when you crank it all the way to the limit, you need to back off your crank two complete turns. And then they tell you in the instruction manual to hold in on this gear lock here, which goes against this big gear and back it off one additional turn so you're actually backing the caulking mechanism off three complete turns twice without holding this and once while holding this and that relieves the tension that you have uh, stressed onto the strap okay the other half of the stock Just goes right back on the way we took it off. And the only thing that I found was that that cheek piece had to be held up as you do this. It's sort of like uh, putting a puzzle together because you've got interlocking mating surfaces here. And once you get it all lined up, she pops right back in place like that. You can do your five screws that are the same, the odd screw goes in this cavity right down here so we'll do that one first so we don't get it messed up and again that's a 15 torques on that one these bolt heads uh, you can still see in this one a little bit of rust still in there and that is the area where your allen wrench has to go in so that you can remove that screw if that rust <coughs> stays in there and this is not able to be removed the only option is send it back to 10 point and let them deal with it um, so with the amount of money that this crossbow costs and it's very expensive it puzzles me why they would not use stainless screws or why they would not have a better corrosion resistant coating on these screws to prevent this from happening since they know that sooner or later it's going to be in inclement weather and they're going to get wet and damp. There we go. Okay, that's the last of the five machine screws, so we're going to go torque them all to the same amount. And then I'm going to push down on that cheek piece so that that glue has a chance to reseat. The butt pad can stay on there. It does not need to come off. I took it off because I wanted to show the... Uh, construction of that composite stock but the part that we remove actually is from here okay. forward and that puts that all back together now what we're going to do is we're going to try our Accu slide and see if it works correctly 
And there she's latched. You can hear the safety clicking on. Now you back this off two turns. Then you push in on that button that I showed you, the green button on the bottom, and you give it one more turn. And that is completely cocked and ready to go. Ready to fire. That's on safe and if you look in here you can see that the little catch there is engaged so it's ready to shoot to decock it put your crank back in you go back to the full cock position which is right there hold in on this silver button for a half a turn and then you can release it and it will decock and it's very very easy to decock right there she's fully decocked back in working condition okay my impressions of this crossbow I think it's a wonderful crossbow. Um, it's definitely one of the fastest and most powerful crossbows that I've ever shot. Um, it'll go right through a block target and wipe the veins right off of your bolt. So uh, you will end up with an Iron Man tar target if you shoot into uh, a target a lot because that's about the only thing that will allow it to be used for target and not... Uh, ruin your veins on your bolts. The um, accu slide problem has to be addressed. Um, if you were going on a hunting trip and you get in inclement weather and that bearing locks up like it did on me, your hunting trip is over because this crossbow cannot be cocked by hand and it cannot be cocked with a string cocker. Um, it is made to be cocked with this belt assembly and that's the only way it'll cock. So uh, if that locks up, you're going to go home or go to your 10 point dealer and hope that he has time to repair it for you. If you're out of the country uh, or not near a dealer, then you're out of luck. Another thing that I did find that I had a problem with was my quiver attachment point there has a cam that actually locks the quiver in place when you slide it on and I found that this nut on this cam keeps coming loose so I thought it was a lock nut at first but after looking at it closely I can see no evidence of it being a lock nut uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drop of Loctite on it when I get it in that correct position which is right there is where it's tight uh, several times this quiver has fallen out of place when I was walking to stand because it just did not hold it securely enough because that nut had backed off uh, the other thing that I would like to see 10 point address is you've got a wonderful crossbow but the scope does not match the crossbow's ability um, it's a good scope for midday when you've got plenty of light but as soon as you get to a twilight position uh, dusk or dawn position that 36 millimeter objective does not gather enough light and it needs a larger objective that has more light gathering capacity so that you can see to make uh, your early morning or late evening shots it does have a illuminated reticle the problem with this reticle is like in most crossbow scopes it is way too bright even on the lowest setting it floods your field of view with either a green or a red light whatever you have it set on and you can't see the animal 
that you're trying to target. So uh, two things, more light gathering and a lot lower illumination. Um, another thing that I saw at this scope, which I found with most crossbow scopes that are marketed today, is it does not have very good trackability. In other words, if you shoot your bullseye and you try to uh, take your impact point, let's say we go down six inches, shoot a bolt, go to the right six inches, shoot a bolt, come up six inches, shoot another bolt, and then come back to the original point of impact, which should be your bullseye, you're going to find that it does not follow that very well. Uh, you'll be doing some additional adjustments to get it back into the bullseye area. And that's just typical of a scope that is not a high quality scope. Very good crossbow and I would recommend it to anybody that wants to buy a top of the line crossbow. <laughs> Aim for the center of that uh, yellow target because there's another one right behind it. That'll keep it from going through. Make sure you keep your hand down below too. I don't want to have to pick up any thumbs off the floor. Pretty light trigger. Here's my zoom. There's three red areas. Yeah. Aim for that center one right below the B. Okay. Ready? We're ready.